And we also wanted to share some really exciting news. To those of you who haven't heard yet, we are actually... We are Mo, Cormac, and Evie. Join us on our journey to build a plantable food trailer. This episode, we struggled to build a box to house our off-grid battery system, but ended up with a beautiful addition to our little trailer, and the system is fully wired up. We hope you enjoy our trailer build part nine. Welcome back, everybody. We haven't been back for to record for a while. We were recently up in Bar Harbor getting married. So I'll be making a separate video with some really special footage and photos from our wedding day. But we have something very special we want to share. Mike and I just wanted to also make another toast just to thank everyone again for coming. And we also wanted to share some really exciting news. To those of you who haven't heard yet, we are actually expecting um, a baby. Yay! We can't wait to meet our little one this December around Christmas time. Today we're going to be trying to build the box for the battery pack and just kind of size it up and make sure everything's going to fit. We first need to take this guy off here because we're going to need all the height that we can get from here up until here is sort of the max that we can do. I guess maybe actually up until here um, because we need to be able to spin this thing around to jack the trailer. You know we're going to be working right here, Evie. Excuse me, Evie. She's, <laughs> She's like, why are you here? And this is my resting hey. spot. Huh. So it's 19 inches to here. I think that's pretty much what we need. And then in the back, so we're gonna have it be like a trapezoid, so it kind of like oh, a trapezoid. Actually, kind of, kind of like falls here. Yeah, yeah. So Cormac already did a bunch of work on this battery. He's been working hard on this for a while, actually. Hopefully it's How many hours do you think you've spent on together. doing the battery pack so far? <laughs> Not including all the research. I don't even really want to think about it. What I'm doing is, these are like European style um, posts and there's not really a good option for sort of like you know, a typical battery terminal that you see on a 12 volt car battery, or we don't really have a good way of securing it to these so I'm going to cut them off, put a thread in, use a screw, and make a really solid connection. So I'm going to be cutting this off. And then I'm going to be drilling a hole through. Alright. Tapping that hole for a 3 8 16 thread to then put this bolt with lock washer, washer, and then screw that down and then the wires will come off. Lock washer. I have put threads in each of these things and there's four screws um, in, in them all now and we are finally ready to start crimping some wires, hooking it up and seeing if the system turns on. Our awesome friend Ted came over to help Cormac out one night as a safety buddy system. Definitely made me feel better. It's about 18 inches including the things, including the studs. Okay. So I think that we're going to try and use some of this it's PVC board used for like exteriors of houses. And so I'm thinking that maybe we might want to make the box out of this and put it on it. One of the benefits is that we don't have to worry about it getting wet and stuff. Alright, we're going to go to Lowe's. So that's 21 inches if we do it that way. I guess now we just need to draw that out on here and, and make some cuts. We were feeling pretty good about our plan as cutting out the bottom panel was smooth sailing. That's quite pretty good actually. In order to really get a sense of how the batteries would sit inside the box, we decided to carry one of them out of the basement and do a test fit, which is no easy feat. 
They are ridiculously heavy and there's always the risk of pinched fingers. Next, we started on the front panel of the box as we were a little nervous about how it would fit with the spinning trailer jack in the front. Just stand right behind it. He's not done yet. He's dead himself too. This is his thing today. He's just blowing everything with this what? Dang air compressor. This oh, let me clean this off. Let me clean this off. This isn't, this isn't a diary, Primo. This is my therapy. Okay. Turn the box. Uh, that looks too high. So six and a half million. Yeah, it's thirteen. Plus six is like 19. No, I'm saying 19. This thing is 19. I know. There's another half an inch that's taken out from this. I think I made it good. There's about six. And so the extra half inch, half inch is a problem. You know what? This is what we'll do. The top of it is going to be slightly angled so that also water falls off of it. What? We're not skilled carpenters. This is like really complicated for us to do. Wouldn't it be easier to just get a new handle? We can, but that doesn't solve the fact that this is the wrong height. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be good for it to be a little bit angled yeah. anyways. All right. So the thing will have like a slight pitch to it. All right, how about this idea, Mel? Can you just, flat, can you just flatten this off? Yeah. And then the whole thing will be able to angle up higher. How about that idea? That's easy as hell. With those two big problems and potential solutions of angling the top and adjusting the handle, we continued on and cut the angles on the front panel that would allow it to be flush with the side pieces. I think we should get the other things and put them on here. Two of them? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we could put it on here. And then we can stack, we can stack, if we stack the two, then we could just draw a line, look at it from here to see if it would clear it. So we just brought up the other battery and the inverter. Like barely clears it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Should we just try and bend this thing and see how much that gives us? Really think it's gonna give us that much? That's <laughs> why I'm thinking that we might not really need a whole lot of extra. That much more room, okay. right, right. So it'd be like this. So that's 26 inches. 26 the inches is too much though because the only things that, the things that we got is actually 24 for like the back panel. The max mm -hmm. we could go is here, which could still work. Yeah. It's like, we're gonna make a box today. Woo! We got one goal. We can do this. <laughs> ha! Hey, see, we're not going anywhere. As you can see, we were a bit of a jumbled mess, not knowing which problem to tackle first. But we carried on and cut out the back panel to see if we could get enough of an angle to clear the inverter. I don't think it's the right hit. What's wrong? I did something wrong. So, this cord goes for that. Can we put something on top to see if this angle is even gonna work? Maybe. It might be fine. Might be just barely. Oops. We decided to use our oops board for our side panels and cut out a new back panel that was the right length. I think that might just be, might just be the ticket. Hopefully. How is that? That's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Barely. Now onto the side panels. Right there. Yeah. So after thinking and long discussion about how the heck this hinge is going to work, we decided to leave a little tab at the end that is going to sit straight to match up with the back panel. I don't know how to explain it, but... That's we'll the decision you. we've made. Are we ever going to finish this? It's too bad we have so much daylight now. We have to keep working. 
to finish something. We can't just be like, oh, it's getting dark. Oh, darn. At four o'clock. Oh, darn. No, what time is it? It's probably like 5.30. 11 years later. So like that? We decided to screw the box together on the table, so to my disappointment, we had to move those dang batteries again. Cormac pre-drilled each hole before screwing it together. So we're not going to screw the front on yet because those batteries are heavy and really hard to get in. So we want to make sure this is good to go before we put in all that stuff. So we're just going to pack up for today and we'll be back probably tomorrow. Yeah, yeah we'll be back tomorrow. All right. <laughs> See ya. Feeling a little defeated by the box, we did our best to muster up courage for the next day. So what we're doing right now is we're just measuring out a little paper template to act as a model for our batteries. And we are gonna figure out where we're gonna bolt the box down that holds the batteries to the frame. Boy, it's getting fancy. We don't have time for this. Hey! Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hey. She's so cuddly today. I know. So we're gonna head to Lowe's and get some new bolts. Yep, to tie this down with. And, um, and then also a couple of straight bolts that'll go down. Can we use the old ones? Um. Yeah. Just throw them in the trash. Oh. I see. Okay, let's just get new ones. They're not that expensive. I'm not digging in there. We got poop bags in there. Oh my god. So these are the bolts. Too rusty. It'd be nice to get some nice new ones. Alright, we're back from Lowe's. We got some goodies for the box. Just making sure this is centered. And we're gonna do the bolts now? Yeah. Luckily, we were able to reuse the two holes in the frame from the old bolts. Alright. Looks good. Yeah, looks real good. Alright. Please. on. That's pretty good though. Now this thing is off. Yeah. And it's spaced correctly already. Yeah. So we could actually just pull that out. Yeah. It's not going to move. Alright, so... Yeah, I think that I'm going to be doing it like back here. I'm going to make some marks. Yeah. Did it work? Yeah. You have such good ideas. Nice. That was quick. Yeah. Cool. Cormac applied some Loctite to keep these bolts nice and secure. The box is giving us a bit of grief. So we're going to be screwing on the front so that we can um, better align the top. Because we have to measure and cut out the top and we need it to be pretty secure. As we tried to align the box, we discovered that the sides were significantly drooping and we had to prop them up so that we could properly square the corners. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's not sagging. It's much good. stronger now. Yeah. That looks like a nice, professionally done box. Yeah. I mean, it's really good. How much do you got over there? Not enough. Oh no. We would need to buy a 4x8 sheet of this in order for it to work. Because this thing is 48 inches. Exactly. 
Right, it, would make it, it would make it look fancier mm -hmm. if we had a nice like, piece of wood that we sanded down and polyurethane. Before heading out to get a piece of plywood for the lid of the box, we tried several methods to bend the back of the jack handle before ultimately having to grind it away with the Dremel. I got a new Dremel, everybody. What? When? You know how I, kept, how I kept like dying out on me? Yeah. No more. Despite being old, it was a solid piece of metal. Got more room, for sure. But it's not gonna be enough. It's way better. That might make it. I think that might make it. Oh. Yeah. I know it does. It's fine. After picking up a sheet of three quarters inch plywood, we cut it down and traced our angles to get our measurements. Good? Good. Nice, hey, that's gonna look really pretty. Oh, uh, it's gonna look so pretty. Yeah. I'm really glad that we went with wood. We're calling it here. The sun is, is it's still, it's, it's still out, but we're done. It's down for us. <laughs> it's a hot day and, um, we need to do a couple coats of polyurethane. It's just gonna take probably a day or two before we wanna attach this with the hinge. This box is still yet unfinished after two days of work, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful box. It's, it's looking gonna good. be a beautiful box. It is. <laughs> We're making beautiful boxes here on the Pineapple Food Trailer channel. Yeah. Alright, good job. Thank you. The next weekend, we dove right back in. Hey guys, we are back on a rainy day today to work on the battery pack. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna try and do the initial fit up of the battery pack and hopefully make some brackets to hold it down securely. What? There is a spider that just, is it on the camera? It's on the camera. Yeah, I think he's gone. Ah, no, he's on my finger. I'm not freaking out, but I'm letting right. him do this. Enough. Get it off of there. <laughs> I'm like little spiders. Give it away. Give it away? What do you mean give it away? Here, buddy. Oh, outside the garage. No, oh, you can be in the corner. Outside. While Cormac worked on cutting out some angle brackets, I cut out a piece of rubber to put under the battery that would reduce the vibrations and also add some extra grip. All right, I stand back and zoom in. It was going fine until you got here. Of course. Okay, we're in there. Now we're about to lift in the batteries. This should be interesting to get on film. <laughs> So I was just in the basement drill using the drill press to put some holes in our brackets and Cormac was cutting away some of the plastic on the battery packs. Yeah, so there's this kind of like this ridge right here that um, I just took the drum one cut away the plastic just so that it wasn't sticking up so that because the feet we want the feet to kind of sit nicely on here. We marked our drill spots and crossed our fingers that we were avoiding the metal frame underneath. Yeah, how much room we got? Oh, perfect. Yeah? Yeah, on one. All right, we're good. We didn't hit the frame. <laughs> and then a nylon insert nut so that it doesn't vibrate loose. All right, we are screwed in and Cormac said it's not going anywhere. All right, Better. everything's, all the pressure is going down and we have this rubber mat and so the, the, the brackets on the, on the sides are really just there to 
want to just help it in case like, you know, it's starting to wobble or something. So what do we got for lunch today? Uh, tikka masala with potatoes and chickpeas in it. I just put some peas on it just for some extra greens. Avocado, these are just uh, baked potatoes, quinoa to go with that. I know I'm jealous, I kind of want this one, but um, Cormac has some very yummy, authentic tasting black beans and rice with these little tofu pieces are chili lime tofu that are like so flavorful, like a bang of like lime, so good. And then avocado, potatoes, fresh tomatoes, and then just like a cashew cream kind of sauce to go on top. After a delicious lunch, we made some rubber pieces for the next battery to sit on. After test fitting the inverter on top of the batteries, we discovered we needed to trim away a bit of the plastic on top of the battery so it could sit level. And then we figured out the height of our wedge that will go under the back of the inverter to make our perfect angle. There's a little bit of a gap there now. Yeah. In the Sweet spot. I think so, hopefully. Then we cut out some braces to connect the batteries together. We ran out of battery for a little while, so uh, since we talked to you guys last, we drilled out the holes for this guy, measured where the screws go, drilled out the holes for all of these. Cormac went back to Lowe's because we realized that the screws we got were too long, so we needed some extra washers to fill in the space. We were able to use pre-existing screw holes in the batteries, which made this process much simpler than it could have been. We were having trouble getting the top screw in and tried several techniques to get it on. In the end, it was just a matter of wedging the battery in alignment and loosening the other screws beneath it. You got it? Got it. How's that sound, though? Yeah, I these things. So this. It's on. Feels good? Yeah. Give me some. Nice work. I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Looks sturdy. So now, we should be able to take this and then put it on the positive and negative. And it should be 48, 53.1 volts. All right, so we're gonna stop here for today and we're going to um, wire up all the electrical stuff. So today was just kind of getting all of the battery, getting the batteries all secured in there. And tomorrow we'll be running the wiring and setting how all of the different switches and stuff are going to be mounted. We made some good progress this day, but still had a lot more to do. We're crimping one of the terminals. So one of these guys fell off. So I got to to redo it. This wire connects the two battery packs together in series to turn it into a 48 volt system. 53 volts. Now we can connect the inverter onto this and connect the rest of the wires. Cormac drew out a design for the wedge and brackets to hold our inverter in place before heading to the upstairs lab to design it in SolidWorks, while I moved on to sanding our lid to prep it for the coats of polyurethane. I'm starting to understand why Cormac likes that thing. It's pretty fun. It's nice, huh? Do you like it? Is it fun? It's fun! It's fun! I told everyone that it's fun. <laughs> this was the first coat of four to seal our wooden lid from any water damage. So that's what you're making for the stopper, huh? Yeah. And so. already printing the wedge for the back. Chromax printing the um, 3D parts to mount this guy on here. And we are just kind of getting ourselves situated with all the wiring so that when those are done, we can mount it and just wire everything up. Cormac cut and crimped wires at the length we needed in the box while I continued putting coats of polyurethane on the wood. Oh, what was that? Fireworks! Oh boy. We really wanted the box to be clean and organized without a lot of extra wire or crossed wires. 
I kind of had no idea Cormac had so much knowledge about doing all the wiring and electrical for the battery system, but what can I say? He's my ultimate handyman. Beautiful. I'm gonna put this over it. Now this stuff is cool. When exposed to heat, it shrinks around the wire to create a nice barrier and transition from the terminal to the wire. Yeah. We are? Some action. We need some action happening here. Gotta clear this off. Make way, make way. Make way for the future. Is that a song? What was that? <laughs> Where did that come from? I made it. You made it? I made it up. <laughs> These are our printed parts. And so, I'm just gonna pull this guy off. And this guy is already off. <laughs> Let me see that. We used double sided tape to adhere the top of the wedge to the inverter, along with a piece of rubber on the bottom. We used two existing screw holes on the top battery to attach a 3D printed brace for the front of the inverter, which we also added a piece of rubber to. This is just a smart shunt, uh, Victron smart shunt, which allows me to see what the status of the battery is um, in real time. So that we can, just from like an app or something. This guy is going on here. So I'm just gonna connect them and torque them down before I screw it onto the wall. That's pretty good. good. Then Cormac attached our DC circuit breaker and it was time to wire it all up. It's better than what you're doing yesterday. Okay. 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 All right. We'll test the voltage from this battery pack to the next one. 53.4. That should be 53.4. And then I should touch on the positive here, and it should be zero. Good. Yeah. Because that means that it's off. And then I should be able to put this on. And then check this. And now it's on. Okay. Amazing. And then this thing through here. You hear it? Yeah, I heard it. So now those capacitors should be all charged up, so now the voltage should be the same. Okay. All right. So now that's tightened and that's on. This is just a um, one side of an extension cord. And so I am going to be hooking this up to the AC output, which is essentially, um, in the end, instead of it going to an outlet here, it's going to be going into a circuit breaker panel on the outside. but. We're just going to be making one outlet that we can draw power from. Alright, output 120 volts. So I can plug in a heat gun. Test it out. And turn it on. Let's see this baby. Woo! Alright. Look at that smile. You happy? That is good. <laughs> that is heat. Alright, so it all works. Yay! With a lot of progress made, we hope to finally finish this project on day five. It was time to install the circuit breaker panel. This is the hole that we popped out here. And it'll be fitting this guy right here. I'm just screwing on. Bus bar. Cormac drilled out a hole for the wires from the battery system to come into the circuit breaker panel box. Perfect fit. We then lined up the breaker box to mark where our screws would go. Why are we? Why are we this? As like a little like getting all the stuff. Wait, you got all of it out and you're putting it all back? Yeah, so that would be a cool shot. Those and bigger quarter washer to go on the back side to kind of Give it a little bit more strength. You bring so these down, yes. Last night. Oh, the brackets. Nice. And so, 
These will go on either side of the inverter. We drilled the holes and did a test fit before making the hole in the bottom for the wiring to come down and eventually find its way into the trailer. This is where the three wires are supposed to be going. So this is on. This is now one with the side. So roughly what it's going to look like. System's off anyway. So you're just removing that wire that we put in yesterday. Yep. So just we'll hand those to verify. There's a lot of attaching, detaching, and reattaching going on here. It's checking your work. Makes me a little are, crazy. Are you are you complaining? Makes me a little crazy. Well. I'd rather do this than you get electrocuted though. There you go. This wire will connect the battery system to the circuit breaker panel. There was a lot more adjusting than we showed here, but sometimes it's fun to pretend that everything happened smoothly the first time. Now we're going to have to decide how much we're going to want. You can see that when Cormac takes off the outer material, three separate wires are exposed. There is an exposed ground wire, the white neutral wire, and the black hot wire, which carries 120 volts. So this is the ground you're wiring? Yep. And he's doing it the zigzags. Why? Just in case I ever need to have a little bit extra. So this way, for instance, also if I ever needed to like just changed my mind I wanted to wrap it around and have it come to the top or something. Mm -hmm. And the neutral is going to go all the way up and down. And so this now connects this whole array for the for the neutral for when I when I wire up the different circuits. Great. Good. So now what we should be able to do is turn the system on. We should have 120 volts. I'm going to pause it up here. 120.6 volts. And then if I do it here, again, 120. Wow, you are good. With all the wiring set, we were finally ready to enclose the box. We screwed on the front panel and started figuring out how the hinge would work with our wood top. It didn't turn out how we had hoped. So this is what we're dealing with. Is Let me open this up. Yeah. Gap here, the gap there, and I don't know if you can see it. I mean, it looks great on like the front yeah. <laughs> and but the it's sides. It's pulling. Now that it's, now that it's, uh, but like this actually is great now. <laughs> it has like a great little thing. Yeah. It looks nice. Another trip to Lowe's got us a two-piece hinge as we hoped it would prevent as much pulling in the middle of the box. And then, we thought we would also screw through the box into the trailer to support it as well. We discovered our screws were a tad too long though. That's it. Uh, yeah. We added a couple of the support screws into the hinges as well to give the box support along the whole back and crossed our fingers that this would be the solution we needed. We pre-drilled the holes and we were all set to screw in the top and find out. That's funny. Then we added the 3D printed side brackets to the sides of the inverter and we had actually finished. A few more additions to the box are needed, but for the most part, it is done and came out really lovely. The process that is building our little trailer again tested our problem-solving skills and patience and took many long days of hard work. But this is a huge step in the right direction of getting our little trailer powered. I thought you were gonna do it. I thought you were gonna do it. I can't, I'm too grumpy right now. Ready? <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here. <laughs> Are you ready? Everything's kind of tidied up in here, and so 
next steps are to finish wiring, running the wiring from the breaker panel and putting the breakers in into the inside. Mo's probably going to be doing some caulking around all of the little trim pieces. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. And as always, eat, eat more, more plants. plants.